Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. I am at the governor's complex. I am looking for the, um, what is this called? The chambers. We are here for the MSN meeting and the um, uh, governor. It's about damn time. Give me some time, I'm looking for it. Is this the MSN meeting with the governor? Or where's that at? Which meeting? Uh, Michael Sinekis and yes, the governor? This is it. Uh, as they were explained of what the bill is, um, felt that they wanted to apprise and they wanted to inform Senator uh, Lindsey Graham and that they wouldn't be able to meet with him till about two to three weeks. So they asked us to um, uh, wait off and we wanted, we agreed because we also wanted to see from uh, Senator uh, Lindsey Graham what his comments were. Uh, the discussions with uh, my lieutenant governor and with uh, my chief of staff is that um, the uh, officials were very thankful that they were able to inform them about the bill and that they would relay that information to Senator Lindsey Graham. And that's why I asked the uh, speaker to uh, pull, it, pull it back for two to three weeks. And that a governor just takes us all the way back to you know when this whole thing started, because the goal was to first pass Bill 181 before uh, Liberation Day on the 21st, uh, and then the, the bill came to the floor of the, the legislature uh, about maybe a month ago, and then came back again about uh, a couple weeks ago. And the message that you're constantly getting back from Washington now is still don't move this bill. If you moved it in July, it would have been done without. The Senate being checked on, it would have been done without the House being cleared. And so, you know, and that's why I'm very concerned with all of this movement because, as much as, you know, locally you're trying to push this local bill, the feedback, I mean, even, even from, you know, their trip also said, we don't know anything about this, we don't know how this is going to impact things, and, and does not move this forward at this time. Well, you know. And, it, and even also in the media, Governor, you, you mentioned that uh, they even said that 1365 may pass in November. So why are we why are we putting all this risk on the table? They the because they're because uh, in my mind and in my uh, discussions with people and in my research, uh, Bill One Eighty One is not gonna impact your HR thirteen sixty five. And I have not gotten any feedback from Washington that it is gonna impact. My feedback from Washington is that they don't, you're right, they don't even know about this bill and they're not even tracking it. That's how insignificant in their mind Bill 181 is. And Bill 181 really was just uh, uh, introduced not in June or July, but it was introduced later. So. Bill 181 was introduced because we, the, our discussions at the White House and at the administrations with the uh, uh, DOI also is that we needed to set forth and establish legislation to create the account and the procedures to make it so that we can then get those monies or use the monies to advance, to pay for our war survivors who have been waiting. And you know, it's, it, I don't really care whether it benefits you or it benefits me, you're right. It's not about benefiting either one of us. It's about benefiting our war survivors who have waited for more than 75 years, uh, Congressman. And I think this, um, your uh, um, adamant about that it's gonna impact that. The only way it will impact is in a very positive way. 
because we will then have the procedure, we will then have the account, we will then have the monies, we will then be able to access those monies so we can start <coughs> paying those adjudicated claims for the war survivors that uh, I think we should, we should start. And um, I expect that um, you would be supportive of Bill 181, and I was just actually um, surprised and amazed that you had put up such a defense against Bill 181, while I continue to be supportive of your HR 1365. So I just say we um, do what we need to do, and I'm just gonna say, that what you do in, in Congress for war repressions, I totally will support. You have my full support. You have my full support of the Lieutenant Governor, my Chief of Staff, my administration, because I, we need to move along. And we need to work together. And we need to be united on this. And Amen. we need to be uh, showing our Menonku that you and I as leaders can work together for their fight and for their struggles and for them to feel a little bit um, you know, compensated for the sacrifices and uh, the horrendous experiences that they had to go through during World War II. So I'm just saying right now, we need to just you know, move on with this and you have my full support and I will continue with my bill when you want. And that's, and that's where there's a problem, Governor, because you can't sit there and say that I have your full support, but you're going to keep pushing Bill 181, and when I'm saying Bill 181 is going to compromise H.R. 1365. And that's where we differ, because I see Bill 181 as complementing H.R. 1365. H.R. 1365 is a means for us to access money to pay for the war reparations. Bill 181 is a means for us to access money to pay for war reparations. There is really no difference in what we're trying to do. We are, have the same common goal and the same common agenda so we can move on to pay our men uncle. Every day I read the paper and there's like one or two of our dearest men uncles who passed away and can no longer now have their reparation. That really hurts me. And I have made the effort to reach out to you to come and let's work together. And I expect that in return from you. Governor, first of all, the problem with Bill 181 is if you pass that, it's gonna send a signal to the Senate that the urgency of 1365 is not there. And so while we want to rush out $7.5 million for those that have been adjudicated now, we still have over $40 million in unadjudicated claims that could be delayed indefinitely because now the Senate's going to say, well, they're, if they're doing it locally, why are we going to rush this thing out and not get it happen? No, because they are very Go much ahead. aware that the monies that are being put into uh, the account is monies that are, are ours to begin with. So, yes, there's an urgency to pay them out. The monies that are going to be paid are our monies to begin with. So. I don't understand where that uh, argument uh, is coming from, but be that as it may, uh, Mike, uh, I am gonna go and continue working and fighting for Bill 181. You, I expect, will go and continue fighting for H.R. 1365, and in the end, we are going to provide the war reparations for our men. Governor, I'm just very concerned. Okay, I've heard, it. I've heard it. I've heard your concerns. I have Governor, heard your. I thought you just sat here and listened to. I know, but I'm just going to say I have heard your concerns. Of course. I know your concerns. I don't think there's a risk in, uh, with those concerns, and Governor, you're very, repeating very, yourself uh, over, and I've just heard it. I, I'm actually, I am listening, and I, I heard. I have not the I'm opportunity listening. to repeat myself because I've already spoken, Governor. And so if I may have the opportunity to speak in this meeting, Governor. May I? So, because Bill 181 is going to be sending that message to the Senate, and it may indefinitely delay 1365, I don't want to do that to our monarch. 
I don't want you to do anything that's going to cause 1365 to, to move any slower. And right now, the situation in the Congress is so delicate. There's so much politics happening right now, nationally, that for us to be able to move this thing forward, we're going to need bipartisan support. Which is why when I reached out to the Republican Party, I was very grateful that they sent a delegation out there to be able to have conversations with their Republican counterparts in the federal government. And the messaging that they brought back, even after their meetings, was consistent with what I am saying. Bill 181 is going to put 1365 at risk, regardless of how you feel about it, regardless of whether or not you, know, you think it's going to turn out one way. I'm a congressman, and I'm telling you in the federal government, this is the message you're coming back to me, and this is something that we should not move forward if we really want to work together, and if we really want to get war claims passed for our people. If the messaging continues to come from this administration that Bill 181 is a priority, and we want to go in that direction, the confusion that's going to cause out there in Washington and the delays that may happen in 1365 is going to be something that I'm not going to be able to control because I'm not the one responsible for that mixed messaging. And so I'm asking you, if you want to support me, please don't push that bill and let's both jointly push 1365 as the single solution for war claims for our people. And I am saying that your information from the Republican side or your information from the, the Senate is not the same information I am getting. I have sent my delegation also my delegation. to go and talk to the Senate officials. I have also spoken to the Republican contingencies that went over there, and that's not the message I got. In fact, when uh, I was talking to one of the Republicans, they said, I don't think it's that much of a risk, uh, Governor, and I will vote for it right now. So there's, you know, differences of information you're getting and I'm getting, and uh, you, you know, I trust my information, I trust my intel. They have gone over there to speak directly to the Senate officials and uh, I don't know if you have spoken to the Senate officials. Uh, I don't know if your information is directly from the Senate inf officials, but my information is directly from the Senate officials. Um, and uh, I guess we'll just disagree and move on with what, with what we have to do. And yes, there is an urgency in my bill 181. And again, the urgency is I want to pay our and uncles, their due right as soon as I can. And Bill 181. Thank you, Governor. I just want to, um, I guess, I, if this is my opportunity to close. The last time um, I was brought into a room full of cabinet officials was when I was trying to repeal pay raises for this government. And back then I said the government did not have the resources to be able to afford that. And I had a, cabinet, a room full of cabinet officials who uh, basically were trying to pressure me and change my mind about that. But at the end of the day, Governor, I turned out to be right. And in this 1365, and your bill 181, Amen. I hope that I'm wrong. If you're going to continue pushing 181, I hope that I'm wrong, and that it's not going to cause any kind of delays. Because I don't want, I don't care about being right. I care about making sure we solve the problem. And Amen. Bill 181 only appropriates 7.5 million dollars for 750 um, of our survivors, and we have 3,000 plus. Our government does not have the money to be able to fund the 3,000 plus. If we pay out the $7.5 million, Who chooses that? where's the rest of the money going to come from mm -hmm. if 1365 gets delayed indefinitely? Amen. What's going to happen to the rest of the Manapu who are not going to be able to get any money? And the problem with that, Governor, is similar to the, call, the time when we paid out COLA and the time when we paid out EITC. Once you pay out one, 
the government is obligated to pay out all. Amen. They can take you to court and they can force you to pay out everybody, regardless of whether 1365 passes. And where is the remaining $33 million going to come from? The government is already struggling. The hospital is breaking. The roads are broken. The schools have water pouring into them. We the haven't paid our taxes. Work. So where is that money going to come from when we have all these other local issues we need to address? Amen. We can solve the water claims problem, but what we need to do is we need to work together and get the money from where it's already being allocated. There's $18 million already set aside. Let's go and get that money together, government. Amen. I agree, and uh, you know, I certainly also agree, um, Congressman, that uh, if there's any delay, I am pegging that you would be able to, to fix it, speed it up, <laughs> and make it work. Because uh, after she all, wants him to fix her issues. And I have every hope that you will move along HR 1365 as quickly as possible. And let's start paying our men on the the, um, the dues that they have so rightfully deserved. Thank you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you, guys. Come on. Mm. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, very interesting. Very. Hi, baby. Let's catch Mike. Congressman. Hi. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, hi, hi, hi. Can, I have... mm. Can we just get a response? I, I, yeah. Can we just get a response? Um, I'm not going to ask you anything. What would you like to tell us about that meeting? Well, I mean, you know, from, from the get-go, when the governor um, announced this um, publicly on the radio that she wants to meet, and then her insistence that it be at her chambers, and then her turning into this kind of a spectacle. You know, there, it's a very disingenuous um, outreach to say you want to work together, and I'm going to fill up the room with my cabinet members, and I'm going to bring it down into the chamber, and I'm going to turn it into this. If we really want to work together, we need to listen to each other. And, you know, as, as a congressman, I'm the guy out there in Washington, this is my job. You know, and I'm asking the governor to please let me do my job so I can make sure that we go and get these resources from where they're supposed to come from. And the governor cannot say she wants to work with me in one time, in one voice, but she's gonna do what she wants in another. I mean that's just that's just not that's not how you work together. And I never I, I never said I don't want to work with the governor. What I did say was if we want to do this, let's do this together and let's just do thirteen sixty five together. So um, that's just what happened today and I'm going to keep doing my job yes. in Washington, and I just hope that, you know, if the governor's going to insist on 181 and that pushing that message out there in D.C., it's not going to derail, you know, all the work that we're doing out there. Right. Because at the end of the day, it's our water survivors and our morale. I, I just want to, uh, thank, thank you, and I just want to say, great job. Thank you from everybody here at Candid. We love you, and just keep doing what you're doing, and we support you. Thank you. Okay. Can you respond to the allegations? Guys, that was the congressman. I am headed out. Hi, hi. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised either. Um, I really don't know how to interview people, so I don't really ask questions. But um, I am done here. Me and Eric are gonna go hug Troy. I'm actually my. I'm. Uh, I'm kind of, my blood is kind of boiling. I, I wanted to scream, you know, but then I have to represent Candid and all of you. And yeah, but <laughs> I'm so glad we were able to speak to the congressman. And there's that faggot Chris, Chris Barnett asking him about JP Manuel. Nigga, that shit's in the fucking ground already, yo. 
I met I met the lady Jennifer, um, his his right hand, and the congressman, and they wanted to hug me. Uh, I guess they really enjoy what we do, or they they appreciate what what Troy mostly Troy. Um, I just try to help where I can. <laughs> um, I love you, Cello. Um, uh, Eric and I are on our way. Uh, I just, I walked out of there. It was, it was all staged. The clapping when she's speaking, that was all staged. Someone started it so everyone can clap, but nobody really wanted to clap. <laughs> that was some funny ass shit. Jesus. Um, today was a long day. Uh, I, I'm following the Jason Song trial. Uh, we, it's kind of, I'm a mother of, uh, I, I, I'm a woman, um, so it, it's taking a toll on me trying to, I'm not the, I'm not part of the jury, so I cannot say what they're thinking, but coming from, um, someone watching every, watching every word, um, it's, it's really, it, it's taking a toll on me. Um, this thing here, just fucking, uh, Jan, you just missed the, um, uh, the Michael Sinicholas along with the governor. And of course the governor did not let him speak. Um, so I don't know how well she's going to work with him, but I just, I let co the congressman know that, uh, us at Candid, all of us, everyone and i'm not just talking about me and troy i'm talking about all of you are behind him on are behind him 100 percent we we uh yeah so i i chased him and then of course chris barnett came along trying to fucking ask him about jp manuel nigga i'm sorry jp that he didn't want to suck your dick <laughs> but it's over it's in the ground where are you jp okay i gotta go guys it, it was actually Josh. It was a waste of MSN time. He, it, it, this is crazy. This administration is fucked up. Um, uh, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for watching. I'm, I'm going to head back to the office now. Bye.